You know, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and all things therein. And he said, it is good. It was not until Adam and Eve sinned that there was an issue. It was because of their choices that they suffered. Ezekiel 28.15 says that even Satan was perfect in the day that God made him until iniquity was found in him. That iniquity was the result of his own choices. But what about Romans 8.29? For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. Now this definitely seems to be speaking of predestination, but let's also expand out and show some of the surrounding verses to get some further context. So in Romans 8, we'll start in verse 28 and go through 30. And for an even greater context, if you read the whole chapter, but it says, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God. Well, there's a choice. You literally have to have free will, agency to choose to love God. And so there is a role that we have to play in this. Again, all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son. There's that word, predestined. So that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. And these whom he predestined, he also called. And these whom he called, he also justified. And these whom he justified, he also glorified. A fascinating scripture, and one that I love to meditate upon. But built right into it is the idea of predestination. Well, the predestination is tied into another word here, foreknew. Those whom he foreknew he also predestined. Now let's think about that. I believe what he's saying is a mystery. And I also believe there is a lot to learn from it. So long as we don't misunderstand or misconstrue what he's saying. So let us consider the predestination part. If this predestination he is speaking of is referring to how we were actually created by God. In other words, we were destined from the very beginning to be this way then does that not mean that we do not have agency? Then we do not have free will? Well, we know from the scriptures that God did give agency to man and that it is for us to choose right or wrong from the very beginning. Each of us has a choice. So how are we to understand predestination? Well, again, I do believe the clue is right within the verses itself. For those whom he foreknew... Now here's the thing about God. God lives in the midst of eternity, and eternity is outside of the parameters of time. For God, there is no past, present, and future, but all things are before his face. He sees all things, past, present, and future, all at once, and he knows all things, even before he ever made us, before he ever conceived of us spiritually. He already knew everything that we would do, everything that we would choose, all the mistakes, all the pain that we would go through. He knew everything about us and how things would end up. And for a lot of people, that means that we do not have agency or free will. But you know, the Spirit showed me something years ago to help me understand how this works. Now imagine there is a river winding through a valley. And in this river, there are waterfalls, rocks, rapids, twists and turns, places where it is shallow, places where it is deeper, places where there are eddies and currents. And far above this river is a man in a helicopter looking down at the course of the river, and he can see everything that is ahead and behind a person who is going down that river in a canoe. And because this man who is in the helicopter from his perspective 
can see what lies ahead for the man in the canoe. Does this mean that he has taken agency or free will away from the man in the canoe? And of course the answer is no. And this is a little bit what it is like for God. For if the river symbolizes time, God can see everything in the past, everything in the future. It is all present to him. He has already foreseen it. And if he has foreseen it, then he has already foreknown us. Remember? Those whom he foreknew, how can he foreknow us before we were ever born? How could he foreknow us before we did anything? How would he know what we would choose, except that he knows all things already? And this in no way eradicates or takes away from our free will and our agency. If you invented a time machine and you went forward 10 years in the future and you saw what your friend had done and where he ended up, would this take away his agency and his free will choice? No. Just because you skipped ahead and saw what he would choose doesn't negate the fact that he still chose it. And so we can finally come to an understanding by examining the very nature of God and how he is not bound by time and how there is no past or future for him, which is why it says of Christ that he was crucified from the foundation of the earth and that God has no beginning and no end because he's outside of time. And so from his perspective, we are predestined because of our choices because he already knows those who will choose him and he already knows those who will reject him. And so we come to the truth of this scripture, knowing that God causes all things to work together for the good of who? Those who love and choose God, to those who are called according to his purpose. And so why are we called? because he's already foreseen that we would answer that call, as it goes on to state. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his Son. He foreknew us, having seen all things that would transpire, having already foreknown the choices that we would make, he knows who are his. And so in that we are predestined to conform to the image of his Son, in that knowing of who we are and what we will choose, he will work with us to bring to pass those things that need to transpire in our lives so that we can fulfill that destiny of ours.